All right, everyone, I'm back. And today we're going to be setting up uh, CUCM as a subscriber here. So for those who don't know, it's a clustered solution of multiple nodes. The publisher is the master node and that has full right access to the cluster and database. Subscribers are just kind of like additional helpers uh, that are part of the cluster. They don't have uh, right access, uh, but they help uh, offload uh, the load of everything, right? So they perform generally the same functions. They're able to set up calls and they just uh, add more capacity to your cluster. Okay, if I do all the basic settings here, nothing really changes about the, uh, the install here, aside from the fact that we have to specify ourselves as being a subscriber. I'll show you that in a second once we get to that menu. Uh, when you're assigning the IP, make sure that you have the right IP. Uh, that IP in the same subnet as your publisher so they can hopefully communicate or there's routing between them. Uh, but generally your subscriber is going to be probably in the same location as your publisher. Uh, also make sure that you're not conflicting IPs. And another thing as well is make sure Gateway is working and, and uh, accessible otherwise the network test will fail and you won't be able to complete your install. Okay, So after you're done you'll hit OK. And I'm going to say no to DNS at the moment. I'm going to enter the platform admin. Uh, so just enter your uh, admin as the username and your password. You can change the username too if you like. Uh, this is just for the certificate. Uh, in my case, this is just a testing uh, setup and doing, so it's not really crucial for me. Uh, but it's, if it's real life uh, and a formal deployment, you'll want to put something more meaningful and probably likely have a, a valid certificate, not something self signed. Okay, so see here, we're saying that it's not uh, the first node in the cluster. That means it's a subscriber. It's also warning us we have to add the first node um, to the publisher before we can continue. If we don't, um, it's going to fail as well when we're trying to connect. So it's not just enough to specify uh, later on here the IP of the publisher. So I'm showing you here, if we log into the publisher, go to system, server, and add new. And in here, you have to click on next and specify the IP that you just configured uh, in the previous menu, right? So that's the IP of your subscriber and you can do the description, but really it just needs the host name or IP and then it'll be good. So you got to save that. So this is the common issue uh, that some people have. Uh, the menu does warn you, but uh, anyway, I think it's good to just show the whole process here. So we're just waiting for it to save. I'm going to say no, that we shouldn't continue our install until after we've done the network validation. So here, we're going to enter the host name that we have assigned to the publisher, and also most importantly, the IP and the security password. So if any of this is wrong, then you're not going to be able to proceed. I said yes, or sorry, no to SMTP, and we're going to hit OK because platform config is now complete. Basically, this next section here is just waiting for a bunch of RPMs uh, to install. Okay, and first we have to format the disk by saying initialize. And we're just waiting for it to format. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. This is pretty normal for any CUCM install. Just Anaconda, just installing all the dependencies and package, uh, packages that we need to get going. So we're just waiting for it to copy these RPMs and install them. Okay. 
You'll also notice it disabled the root account. That's kind of interesting. Uh, Cisco just doesn't want anyone to break things by getting in as root and possibly for security reasons as well. Okay, so now just uh, extracting uh, the Java SDK. I'm just going to wait for that to happen here. Okay, and one of the final steps here is the platform uh, component. It's just installing more of the components uh, for the clustering. Okay, now this is going to go into reboot and it will continue the install once it reboots. Okay, so it's booting up. It's just doing all the normal stuff that you would see, mounting the root file system. Now it's going to configure the network, basically it's just doing some more checks that it normally does. Oh, just doing more stuff, checking the network and making sure you have connectivity. Uh, this is where sometimes people go wrong, especially um, if you don't have NTP running or if you have an issue uh, with your NTP. Um, it is going to probably bite you here and it's going to bite me probably in a few seconds here. And this is because actually I don't have NTP. I've chosen not to use it because uh, I'm running on an internal network. Uh, but normally you want to run NTP. Obviously you want to make sure the time is synchronized. Okay, so I'm just entering the first node uh, access uh, configuration there.
Okay, so there's a few reasons you could actually have this error, um, but in my case, I just happen to know that often when this happened, I know my connectivity is good, um, so what I end up doing is, is actually uh, going back to, uh, um, to the uh, publisher and restarting the NTP service. That will normally fix it if you have that problem. Okay, and you can see up here, I did uh, utils NTP restart. Okay, I'm gonna try that again, and then it's gonna work after this. Okay, so now it's good. And we're not gonna use SMTP. And we'll see, okay. And this time everything should be smooth. But just remember if you're getting any errors, it, it's usually because of communication or because of your NTP uh, server. So if it wasn't working, I wanna make sure that I could do like a utils network ping, uh, the IP of your subscriber from the uh, publisher. All right, so make sure you have communication. That's mainly the, the biggest issue that causes this. Also, if you didn't add your, uh, your subscriber to the publisher GUI, like I showed earlier in the video, uh, that's another reason you might have an issue. Yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, it's not too bad as long as you keep those things in mind. Uh, not all these things are always documented very well. Uh, that's why I made this video and I do hope that it helps you. Uh, after this point, I'm not gonna make the video like another hour long, but it does the normal install like your database component and all, all that other stuff. Um, so you'll be fine after that. And uh, it doesn't take too much longer after this point here. Um, so that's pretty much all I can show you. Uh, I hope this helps you, and once again, thanks for watching, and see you next time.